how do you know this fabulous downtown location? <laughs> well, this is downtown Johannesburg, which to some people would be considered the Wild West, I guess, of South Africa. Um, but it's just, the thing about it, it's just alive with so much energy. You know, you don't find this just anywhere. It's quite, there's something about it that you feed off. So this is quite special, actually. You it just gotta, is. You just, you just got to watch your things around you. Just <laughs> be a little careful. I think anybody who is anybody uh, in the theatrical industry in South Africa uh, is well aware of the iconic market theatre just because of its place in, this, in the industry and it, it's just such a touchstone for anyone who is remotely involved in the industry. It's, it's just a beautiful space and it's got beautiful history. Have you done some shows here I take it? Actually I have. Over the years, yeah. <laughs> and the first time I walked in here and I was going to do a show in here I was just completely overawed by the occasion. The previous shows that have been here, yeah, like all the Apple Few God stuff, who uh, I, I can't I can't explain the experience it was. I was so honoured. We're actually just gonna um, look back a little bit, rewind a bit, and just gonna ask about how you first got into the industry, how you first became involved as a lighting designer and a theatre practitioner. Sure. Um, but I believe you were working somewhere completely different. Is yeah. that right? I was a banker for about seven years. <laughs> That's and unbelievable. I did, a, I did a complete about turn and uh, signed up at the local college in Durban, South Africa to do uh, a course called Theatre Technology quite by accident. It just looked interesting. Everything else that I wanted to do was, was uh, registration had closed so I chose that. It was a three year course. Uh, the first year you, you touched on all these sort of aspects of theatre, set design, set construction, costume construction stage management, lighting, sign, and then from your second year onwards you had to choose a discipline. You had to measure in either lighting or sound. And I spent uh, my teenage years in the punk era, deaf in one ear, not a musician, sound was out. Did you have like a first major show that sort of sticks in your mind? Probably the first time I was asked to design a theater theatrical show in a theatre, because I was working for a staging company and not really getting the opportunity to design in a theatre. Uh, so the first time I did that, I was completely overawed. I was completely flattered that someone had chosen me and given me this opportunity. And I grabbed it with both hands and I still remember some of the scenes in that today, and that's 20 years ago. Uh, and I just, uh, Where was that? It was in the, a, a, a local theatre, a 500 theatre called the Snedden Theatre in Durban. It's one of our major theatres. A show called A Christmas Carol. Um, and I still remember a lot of it, but it was just, it was just such an honor to be asked and trust, the trust that was placed in me, I was determined not to disappoint. What impacted South Africa becoming a democracy in, in uh, 1994 have on the sort of, uh, the worlds of theater and performance art? Uh, certainly it exposed us to so much more. We, you know, we were very restricted because certain artists or overseas artists couldn't come without being uh, black marked. Uh, sort of had a black mark, black mark against their name. So there so, was a, there was a basically a lot of censorship. Yeah. So there were sanctions and stuff placed on certain people who would come. So we we didn't see that. So when it opened up and people started coming, these big tours would come and we'd see all this incredible technology that we weren't aware existed. Um, so that certainly happened. And also we got to see different styles of things. Um, and I think it opened us up into believing that we could do that too. And then it just gave us those opportunities. You describe yourself as a theatre practitioner. So you, you create and produce your own work, which you also light. Um, why is it important to you to be able to showcase uh, and entertain in, in this specific way? In my own small way, I want to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I'm a great believer in live and let live, but I do think um, there are some people need to be exposed to different viewpoints. Um, and I don't want to change, I just want everyone to. I, I basically, it's a, for me doing theatre, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a writer, I love the creative writing, um, and the easiest way for me to take what I've written and get it out into the world is to 
put it on a stage because I'm not going to get published. There are too many other better writers out there than me. And then I can add value to my writing by adding light and sound and I can make it a far more entertaining experience than for people who don't read. Then a lot of people who don't read. So I can get this package, put it there and say, hey, listen to what I've got to say, maybe I'll change your life. And this is a nice question about why do we need light in our lives? Sure, yeah, that is a, it's not even a question. It's a, it's a given that we need light in our lives. Um, we, I, I, I had a show that I wrote and it's still in performance from time to time. It's about a guy who was born different. He has an abnormal skin color and he sets out to uh, remove all light from his life because he realizes that it also shows all the flaws, his skin color, and he's different, and so he decides to live in darkness. But what he finds out at the climax of the play is that by removing all the light, you also remove the opportunity to see all the beauty. And I think that's what we forget. We have to need, we need light to see beauty too. So yes, it's going to show the flaws, but let's rather focus on the beauty. There's so much of it out there. Um, look for it. The more you look for it, the more you'll find it. Don't stop looking. And I, and I try and encourage people in my lighting workshops to do that. Just notice. Every day I'm noticing a moment in the world that is special. And now I'm just full of them all day long. <laughs> so that's, that's the truth. It happens. Photographers do it. You know, and I think lighting designers do it just because we work in that medium. We can't live without light. It's like love. Good point. Um, are there any highlights or memorable moments from your career that you could share with us? Yes, I, I had an idea once to do a show with one man and one light and I presented it to a few guys and there was, I was very fortunate in that there was a local distribution company called DWR who said we like that idea, we'll back you. <laughs> um, and it was a collaboration, there were other people that I got involved and eventually Rogue International got involved took me to London with my cast, or my, my, my one man, and we eventually ended up in Frankfurt, and some of the biggest opportunities in the world came my way, purely because I had an idea, and I said, listen, and someone listened. It was just quite out of this world for me, and I, I really was so fortunate to, to have people just listen to what I had to say, and then give me a chance, you know? And, and, I, and I, I'd like to say about that is that if you have an idea and you believe in it, chase it. Chase it, chase it until it's done. You're in, involved with a lot of theatre related educational activities uh, and initiatives I understand. Could you tell us a bit about that? I'm a great believer in giving back. Uh, as I said, the, the privileges that I've been given, the industry has been fantastic towards me. And I feel like the best I could, I, I need, there needs to be a legacy or, or something that people can follow. And um, I, for me, it's less about, it's, it's, it's less about imparting knowledge, it's more about imparting passion. You know, if, if you can't be in this industry without passion. And if I can ignite a passion in one, two, three people, I'm, I'm going to be the happiest guy on the planet. So, and I really do want this industry to grow. And I think we, post COVID, we have a huge opportunity to instill this passion into a new breed of people coming through. And, and fortunately, DWR offer these training platforms where we can teach people who can't afford to go to colleges and things. And I, I just love it. I get so amped when I'm in front of those people <laughs> trying to impart stuff. And I just love it because I just, I just know one, two of them will get something from it and go off and be someone famous. I think it was Degas, the painter, who said, um, art is not what we see, but what we make others see. And that's what we need to do, make others see. What do you most love about your work? The people. Without a doubt, the people. You know, they are passionate about what they do. Uh, it really is a vocation. Um, and as much as it may not be the most rewarding from a financial point of view, from a soulful point of view, <laughs> you know, it really fills you up. Um, and to have people that think like you and have the same touchstones, 
Yeah, well, what else do you need, really? What else do you need?